Hello, good morning. Welcome to Sunday Satsang. Hi, Satsang. I'm a little bit late getting this started because I accidentally started the meeting in the wrong in the wrong place. I had been running an experiment checking whether the technology was working properly and I streamed I was streaming into a little closed private group that I have that has no members in it just so I have a place to uh, you know run experiments like this hi Raj and so I'm sitting there talking to myself and, and Ma Tree try, was over there on her laptop trying to double check in the ashram streaming and it wasn't there and suddenly I realized wait a minute I put it in the wrong place so I had to stop it and start over so anyway we've got Raj here and Raymond Ray here and so it was just my bad, so that's why I'm a little bit late getting this thing turned on. You probably noticed by now that the topic is Karmashaya. And Karmashaya is just a wonderful, it's one of, I just love this word Karmashaya. None of, hi Nellie, none of this with these fancy words is about becoming scholars. We're not trying to become language scholars or, or, or Sanskrit scholars, etc., to do diagnostics of the ideology of words. Hello, Nicholas Ola. And but but some of these words are extremely useful and and just by it, it's very tempting to say I speak English or I speak Spanish or I speak Dutch and I don't want to learn this other language. Well, we don't have to learn another language, but every field of human inquiry has its own principles and its own words, its own language. So in that sense, hello, Aranka. Hola, not hola. Wait, what do, you, what do we say? Hoi. 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 Ma says hoi too, Aranka. But some of these words when we dive into it when we dive into the word it gives us tremendous insights about principles and practices themselves so it's very very practical i'm going to put this little thing here behind me on this couch has a little bit of a lean to it so anyway karma shaya karma shaya is the field of karmas what is a field of karma? Think of a field like a farmer's field. Does the field grow weeds or, or the field in, in your front yard of your house? Does your field grow weeds or does it grow fresh food or beautiful flowers? What's growing in your garden, in your field? That's the karma shea. It's what I like. It's one of the things I really like about this word because it, it's just easy to to call to mind such great visual imagery of a field of samskaras. Samskaras are, of course, our habit patterns, deeply embedded, deep in the unconscious, and are the driving force behind karma. Karmas, in, in our modern times, it's very common people talk about my good karma and my bad karma, and that's actually very misleading. It, it sounds like a, a punitive thing. I've done something wrong, so therefore I'm being punished with my bad karma. Or I've done good deeds today, so I'm going to get good karma for it. And that's very, very misleading about the nature of karma. Karma literally just means actions. It's the actions that we do. The thinking process that I'm doing internally is a reflection of my habit patterns, my samskaras. The words that come out of my mouth in relating with other people is a reflection of those habit patterns. The actions that I do out in the world are a reflection of those habit patterns. So the karmas, all of the karmas or the karma, whether you call it singular or plural as if they're separate from one another, which they are, whichever way you call it, the karma or actions of speech and thought and behaviors, physical behaviors out here, all of those come from the deep habit patterns called samskaras. And those samskaras, for better or worse, painful or pleasurable, 
they all grow in the garden or the field called Karmasheya. And one of the, wow, well, Ray joined again. Ray was here and I guess went away and joined again. Hi again, Ray. Uh, anyway. And it's one of those words that if you are exploring Oops, my connection is weak. It says my connection is weak. Why should it be weak? weak? I'm sitting almost right in the office. This connection never gets weak. This should not be happening. You're running still. So. It's still running. Okay, yeah. that's the nice thing about having Moss sitting there looking at that. And it looks okay. The visual yeah. is okay. Everything was blurry. Yeah, okay. So that's what it does. That's what it does when it's going slow. Well, it's not here. Now I'm looking at myself on the on the mobile phone, and I'm not blurry on there. Maybe I'm just living in a fog. Maybe it's my karma, huh? Yeah, your karma shea needs to be polished. My karma shea needs to be polished. Anyway, what I was about to say, if you're studying or, or still here, changed devices. I see. Okay. Thank you. Just curious. Uh, what was I saying? Uh, if you're exploring the cookbook, I like to call it a cookbook, if you're exploring the cookbook called Yoga Sutras, this this term karma shea sits right in the middle of it. It's right in the heart of it. I'm on my laptop and my phone. I'm on my iPad and my phone. See, there's me on the on the phone there. And I've got a Matri over there. Are you there. talking to yourself? I'm talking to myself again, but I'm trying to talk to everybody there. Ray is there, and others are there, and there are a few of us here now. Anyone can post questions? And yes, and you can post comments here. Post comments. This this has no ability for, you know, interactive video, uh, but I will respond to anything, pretty much anything. You know, and uh, anyway, what I was trying to say is that in the, if you're exploring the cookbook called Yoga Sutras and trying to get it to make some down to earth practical sense, one of the ways to do it is to dive right in the middle of it. And then you, when you dive in the middle, you can see what came before it and what is coming after it. So something is in the middle and is right in the heart of it. Well, this is where the word karmasheya is to be found. And so I'm going to read it to you, just so, just to prove it to you. There's four chapters of Yoga Sutras. Karmasheya is mentioned. It's in another place or two, but I don't remember where. This is the one that's in the heart of it. And it's in chapter 2, sutra number 12. I'll impress you with my pronunciation here which is not perfect, but it says, <laughs> Klesha Mula Karma Shea Drishta Adrishta Jama Vedaniya. And the scholars would, would beat me severely for my pronunciation, but the principle is what's important. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a translation of that is something like this. Latent impressions that are colored Karma Shea result from other actions, karmas that were brought about by colorings, clashes, and become active and experienced in a current life or a future life. That's the drishta and adrishta is is seen or unseen, visible or, or invisible. Having colorings is klesha mula. It's from the clashes. So those memory traces that are stored in the field called karma Shea, are, are klesha, klishta, and so we, most of you are familiar with klesha, which simply means attachment, attraction, aversion, or fears. And hello, Lenora. Hello, Machas. And so stored in the karma shea, the topic we're talking about is karma shea, the field or garden of plants that are growing of habit patterns in the mind, that karma shea, those samskaras, it's saying are there in the field. 
And it's saying that the klesha, the coloring of attraction, aversion, or fear, essentially attachment, the coloring remains at the root. And that's what causes a samskara to be a samskara and not a mere memory. You know, I, I, we went for a walk a little while ago, and we walked by, you know, quite a few trees, and there were some birds chirping, and some people that we saw, and some cars drove by. But do any of us who were walking, do we remember those cars that drove by? Mostly no. I do remember one man in a big black pickup truck that was pulling some plumbing equipment behind him in his trailer. And why did you mention it? I remember it. And, and that one caught my attention. Why? Because, it re because that fellow's truck reminded me of somebody else who I know. So the coloring that's in my, in my karma shea is not of that man really, but of another man who we know who also has a black truck or had a black truck and was pulling, always pulled around a trailer. So seeing that man reminded me of my other, of the other man, and for a moment I didn't recognize it. But aside from that, I don't remember any of the cars, really, that drove by us while we were walking. Those are not klesha. Now, the, the, the truck that drove by that we saw, I have no coloring in regard to that, but it's a sort of mistaken coloring. I remember that truck and that fellow only because it reminded me of somebody else. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm remembering that relationship, and it reminded me of the other fellow, who is a guy that I do like. There's some coloring there. It's not intense, but basically I like the guy. He's a nice guy. And so that's the principle of a habit pattern or a memory that's stored in the garden or the field called karmashaya. So we have a field of karmashaya that's just loaded with habit patterns and memories. And some of those memories are colored with I like, like the man that I'm talking about. Now, I don't like the man who was driving this truck. I don't know him. I've never met him. But it was just a relationship. Huh? It was just, thank you, it was an association. Just the mind makes these associations. And this is one of the reasons that we, as yogis and meditators, that we want to introspect our own unconscious. Because very often we have made associations that are not really valid. So you find a person that you don't like a certain person, you're having trouble with that person, and it's very possible that in the deep unconscious an association has occurred that we don't know about. What if I did not like the man that I know with the black truck? And then I'd see this guy and, I, and I'd say, hmm, I don't like him. And I wouldn't figure out why. I had a patient do that to me a little bit where they were acting a little bit strange to me in their relation. And I realized that there was actually like a third person in the room. They're relating to me as if I was their mother or their sister yes. or their teacher. There's somebody that they didn't like. And... It was uh, very weird. Yeah, in psychology, they call that transference. Sometimes people in common language call it projection, but projection and transference in psychology are two different phenomena. And so transference, oh, I know when I was studying counseling, they taught us that says if you're sitting in a session with another person and you start to feel crazy, you're the therapist, and you start to feel disjointed or crazy, consider the possibility you are probably being transferred on and there's somebody else in the conversation that you don't know about. So if that person's mother is being transferred on to you and that, and that patient's turning you into their mother, there's a mother in the room and you don't know it. The unconscious of that client or patient, they, they, they know it unconsciously, but you don't know it. So you just sit there have trouble tracking the conversation, but we all do this. And this is the point here about the, the, you know, the patient story or, or the black truck story. It's simply that the unconscious mind makes associations. It's just what it does. 
and, and what's really going on there. The memory traces, some of the memory traces are colored with I like or I don't like, thumbs up or thumbs down, to put it in, in simple language. And then we have many, many words in our languages to describe this or to describe this. And, and we all know words, so we don't need to sit here and make a list of them. I did make a list of them on one of my website articles on emotions as a way of demonstrating. There I referred to it as a smiley face or a frown face, which is essentially this or this. It's a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And I put like 500 words there. And yes, I, that's what I said, Raj. Sometimes we use the word projection in common language, but common language and transference are not the same thing. Let me finish this other comment. I'll come back and say some more about that, Raj. Uh, but I put a list of something like 500 words there and just invite the reader of the article, read through the list of words. I just collected a whole bunch of words. So, and, and then look for yourself and decide, does this word here mostly reflect this or this? Does it reflect smiley or frown? Which one of the extremes? And most of our thoughts that come forward from the unconscious are colored with one or the other. So it, it, there, there's a beautiful simplicity to it because there's only two categories once you see it. There's hundreds of words that we can use to describe that person, but, you know, but they fall into two categories. It's this or this. I sit here, Matri is sitting over there. Predominantly, my reaction to Matri is this. It's a thumbs up and a smiley face. I hope she's smiling back at me, so I, I think I'm... I'm laughing about the word predominantly because it's a good choice. Predominantly. Yeah. Predominantly. That means... Mostly. Uh, mostly. It means that mostly, which talking. always leaves it's room for a little bit... A little bit of... Which is okay because it's going... It's she's shooting for 100%. That's, that's what we got going I'm on here. so amazing, Sam. Anyway, all of that stuff is going on in the karma shea. And again, that's just I'm just speaking up that I like the word karma shea, and it sits right in the middle of the Yoga Sutra. It's not quite exactly in the middle, but it's Sutra 12 of Chapter 2 where it's introduced, and it's the field, or if you like to make it prettier, the garden. The garden in which all of our habit patterns and our memories are growing. And some of them are kind of neutral, like most of the cars that we saw today. And some of them are ever slightly colored. And in the case of the guy in the black truck, it's colored only because it, it, was, it unconsciously reminded me of somebody else. And as we were walking, I recall now, for just a moment, when I first caught the glimpse of that black truck, I thought that it might be the guy that I know. And it took a fraction of a second for Budi in there to discern, no, not the same guy. And then some part of me felt a little, uh, because it wasn't the guy that I knew. And, and I was prepared to wave and smile, you know. And these are our reactions. And those actions are karmas. So if I had thought that it was the guy I know and I'd wave, that would have been karma. And you say to me, Swamiji, why did you wave at that guy in the truck? I could say, well, it's my karma. Oh, did you have something coming to you? Did you deserve that or something? No, karma just means action. The action is my hand was waving. Why? Because I thought it was somebody that I knew and was friendly towards. And, and I didn't do that. Uh, but because my discernment immediately told me that it was not the person that I knew. But anyway, again, the point is karma shea. Karma shea is a field of karma, which means it's the field of all those memories and habit patterns. And in terms of what we're ultimately trying to do with meditation and contemplation, in terms of self-realization, <coughs> we're attempting, one moment, we're attempting to find a way to temporarily, to some degree or a great degree, we are attempting to temporarily set aside all of the karmashaya, the entire field. So in that sense, when I'm sitting for meditation, any thought that comes to mind, however beautiful or good it is, is a distraction. 
if the favorite person in my life, Swami Rama, comes into my mind while I'm meditating, well, now if it's if if it's him and he's showing up inside to teach me something, then yes, okay, I'll stop my meditation and listen. But if it's just my my mind as ego me person, just remembering him because I like him a lot, and I'm remembering him then not now. In fact, I can recall him in a lecture one time, probably said it many times, said, looking at an audience of people out here, a couple hundred people sitting, he said, I know you, I, I, I like being with you, but when I sit for meditation, I don't want to see you internally, not now. And so there's the principle, karma shale, field of karma. And Raj said, posted in here, transference, sometimes we use the word projection in common language. And there is a difference. And again, labels don't matter so much, but there is a terminology that's used in the field of psychology, transference, and there's one called projection. And if we understand the difference, they are very, very practical tools. We don't have to all be therapists, but... <clears throat> But if I'm sitting here looking at Ma Tree and, and I start behaving her, it to her in some odd sort of way, she doesn't know where the hell I'm coming from, the way I'm talking to her and behaving and all like that. If I have accidentally, internally, unconsciously turned her into my mother, then I'm going to start behaving towards her the way I wanted to behave towards my mother. So am I, if I'm getting a bad attitude and I'm getting a little grumpy and I'm going, blah, 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 I don't do that. I don't think I had much. I don't think I have much issue left with my mother, bless her heart, who is long gone. Maybe there's a little. But if I'm doing that, that's called transference. I am taking my mother and I'm superimposing that on top of her. That's transference. But if I got up this morning. And, and something wasn't going very well, and you know, I tripped and I stubbed my toe on a table, and it went ouch. And 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 and, and then I, you know, burned the oatmeal, and just everything was going wrong. Everything's going the wrong this morning. Yeah, sometimes we have mornings like that. And I walk in happy. No, but oh, wait a minute. Let let me finish the story. And how am I feeling inside? I'm having a pretty bad day. I may not consciously know that, and but inside, what am I really feeling inside? I'm feeling grumpy. There's one of those words. That's one of those those words. It's a frowny face word. Let's see, it's a frowny face, not a smiley face. Smiley, frowny. It's a frowny face word, and it's a one of those words. So I'm feeling grumpy. And if I want to call it grumpy, I, that's because I don't really want to call it angry. Anger is a big word, and I'm not feeling that. I just sometimes will say, uh, how are you doing today? Are you angry? You say, no, I'm not angry. I'm just a li little irritated, or I'm grumpy, or I'm, you know, I'm in a mood. But they all are s the same category of words that has to do with this. And so she comes in and says good morning to me, and I say, I don't notice it, and I say, good morning. She says, how, she says, well, how are you doing today? Something wrong? And I said, no, I'm fine. And before you know it, I'm and she responds to me, and I say, well, what's wrong with you? Right? I say, you, you know, you seem to be in kind of a bad mood this morning. And she says, no, no, no. No, I, I'm fine, but something, something's wrong with you. What has happened there, I did not superimpose my mother onto her and turn her into my mother. I took my anger, and instead of seeing that it's my irritation over stubbing my toe and burning the oatmeal, instead of doing that, it's as if the unconscious wisdom, is, booty, is, is sitting there inside, colored, and saying, hmm, somebody around here is angry. Somebody's pissed off. Who is it? It's not me. Must be her. And so what I have done, Raj, is I have projected my anger onto her. I'm not I'm not willing to see that I'm having a bad morning and that I'm in a grumpy mood. Somebody's grumpy though. I, I know it. Unconsciously the 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 booty is functioning. 
but is functioning through a filter uh, of karmashaya, through a filter of colorings, like looking through glasses. I'm looking through colored glasses. And by looking through colored glasses, Budi knows somebody's grumping today. Well, it's not me, obviously, because I'm perfect. And so who is it? It must be her. So that's called projection. Projection was I take my crap and I project it onto her. If what I, here's, here's where we get in trouble with common language. If I project onto her my mother, I've actually transferred my mother onto her. Good. The difference is clear. And it's useful, isn't it? Then it? And then once we got that, then it doesn't matter really what words we use. And then in our common language, if you hear somebody talk about the word projection, you hear that, you know what it is. And as yogis, when we hear somebody do that or we watch ourselves do it ourselves, we have an instant with booty, we have an instant flash inside, a little clarity of booty, a little clarity pops up and sees exactly what just happened. Somebody else is in the conversation and I don't know who it is. And then here's an okay. I didn't meant I didn't say that this this morning, but there is another one. But now that she said it, I'll throw that out too. And it's a useful terminology, counter transference. Okay, so if I turn her into my mother, I transfer onto her my mother, and I'm sitting there talking to her. Ma trees in front of me, but in fact I'm unconsciously talking to my mother. And she doesn't know it. Now, if she does, if she's not consciously aware that I have turned her into my mother, then she's going to sit there and start to feel a little bit crazy because it's confusing. What the hell's going on? She may say, "What's going on with you, Swamiji? What's going on?" And I say, "Nothing. What's bothering you?" You know, she's not. The communication is not not complete. So here's the question then. What happens to her internally when I turn her into my mother and she doesn't know that it's happened, but there is an unconscious reaction? So maybe she gets grumpy back at me, or maybe she goes, hmm, like that, does a little thing, hmm, like this, and turns around and doesn't look at me and turns around and walks out of the room. I'm just making up an example. And so her reaction to me turning her into my mother is she walks out of the room. And maybe that's something that she learned in childhood. This is not about psychology, but it becomes part of her karmashaya. That when somebody projects onto me, I, I go, hmm, give them a funny look, give them a dirty look, and walk out of the room. That's counter-transference. So when somebody trans... It's a reaction to when someone transfers it's, onto you. It's a reaction when someone transfers on you. And when I was taught that in therapist school, we were taught to use counter-transference as a way of assessing what to do next in the therapeutic situation. Observe your own counter-transference is that when you're with another person, whether it's therapy or as a doctor or just with friends or in any situation, when that craziness happens and somebody's transferring onto you, you may not notice, but you notice, you know, that you're feeling tense in your stomach, you're feeling acid indigestion, or you're feeling tight, or, or your, your diaphragmatic breathing goes away and your chest breathing, whatever it happens to be, you notice that you're having a reaction. That's your own counter-transference in reaction to being transferred on. And so one of the very practical ways that this does, does that happen a lot? This that I'm talking about, Aranka, is that what you're asking? I didn't see it when it first came up, your note. And yes, this, both of, all of these happen a lot in human relations. And this is one of the reasons, if I may add, that in yoga the first principle that we cultivate is an attitude of ahimsa, non-harming. And so whether we're just in a family, in relationship with other people, it's your spouse, it's your children, it's your parents, or, or you're a clinician, a doctor, or a psychologist, or something else, dealing with a client or a patient, or, or you're in business of some kind and you're serving a customer. We're just we're dealing with human beings. And it doesn't mean we have to remember every one of these terminologies, but we can see the, the dynamics between people. We do it to others and other people do it us, to us. 
we project on one another, we transfer onto one another, and we have counter-transference reactions. And in terms of yogic language, what is it that we are seeing? We are seeing the playing out of my karma shea, my garden, my field of the unconscious, my field of samskaras. What are samskaras? They are the kleshas. What are the five kleshas according to Patanjali outlines them nicely? Avidya, Asmita, Raga, Devesha, and Abhinivesha. We're not talking about those in detail right now, but all of these principles that we keep talking about, they are how to cook. They are how to use the cookbook. So they're principles in the cookbook. How can we recognize this in our history? How can we recognize this? Self-observation, self-awareness, Aranka. Ar Ar very good question. And what do what do, the, the transference... The first clue that transference is happening to you is notice that you feel confused. You feel disjointed. Something's going on in the relationship and you can't figure it out. You know, it, it, a way that this happens, I think, commonly in marriages is accidentally, accidentally one of the partners is acting out the relationship with a previous spouse or an old girlfriend or an old boyfriend and neither person knows it. And so if you got two people, each uh, everybody has a past, and mostly everybody has a past. So, you know, one person has a past partner, the other person has a past partner, and so when they interact, if they're not being honest with each other and the two people are not doing self-awareness, this is why we keep exploring over and over and over, know thyself on the temple of the De Oracle of Delphi in ancient Greece. You know, Know thyself. And, and this is what the yogis do. They keep doing introspection, inspection within. That's why we're doing it. Observing body language. Be, uh, watching our own body language. Yeah. And, and, and out of that, we're con we are seeing the whole dynamic. And we're seeing I'm reacting to the other person and the other person is reacting to me. And I'm doing... You, you recognize something. Of course you recognize something. We all do. And that's why we want to explore ourselves. And when we talk about witnessing the four functions of mind, of manas, chitta, ahamkara, and buddhi, this is what we're talking about. This word karmashaya, karmashaya, I'm gonna, let me get that in a minute, Ray. This feel, word karmashaya is basically, uh, for me, it, it's, it's, it, it, it's a more, I don't know what the word is. I'm, I like the word. I've said that. I just like the word. It's basically... Uh, a more manageable, more graspable word than chitta. Chitta sounds so big or something like that. So the field, the field of my personal samskaras, my habit patterns, the field of my seeds, the, some, of the, my, some of the seeds in my field are weeds and some of them are nice vegetables and some of them are pretty flowers. And so all of those seeds together are sitting in my field. And uh, what does being neutral to people? Depends on how we are neutral. And this is why, Chandra Moli, this is why we have to explore within. Then we can discover that sometimes being neutral towards another person is my reaction of how I have a habit of dealing with other people. When things aren't going quite my way, I just become neutral. I'm not actually being neutral. I'm actually being very negative. But I like to call it neutral. No, I'm not disturbed. I'm not angry. I'm not upset. I'm neutral. You know, and inside, maybe unconsciously, you know, I want to rip his lungs out. I mean, you know, to be dramatic. And so there's another kind of neutrality that is genuine neutrality the walk that we were on this morning, the, the, the man in the black truck, I was really, you know, 99.9% .9 neutral towards that man. I didn't even see his face through the window. He had a darkened out window. But I saw his truck, and for a moment it flashed that it might have been somebody I know. So that's neutrality. I don't have anything like this or this towards that man. What about the other people that we saw out there? There was some woman walking a dog this morning. I did not recognize her. And so it's basically neutral. Most of the people in the grocery store, the market where we go buy food, 
most of the people in there we're neutral about. We may recognize them, but have never had a conversation in, with them. Example for me, the people who work in the meat department and cut up cows and pigs and chickens to put in packages for people. I don't have any interaction with them at all. There's a couple of them, people that work there. I recognize that I've seen them before, but inside of me they are totally neutral unless I have some unconscious aversion towards that man because he's cutting up cows. You know, but we're, we're all the time you know, walking by people on the street that we're totally neutral towards. And so we have to use our own inner... You cannot do anything to be neutral. You can't do something to fake it. You cannot fake being neutral. If we're faking being neutral, then we're not neutral at all. We're just lying to ourselves. And this is a part of the principle of yama number two. The second of the first rung of yoga is the yamas. The second one of those is satya, truthfulness. And it be, means, in part what I'm alluding to here, it means being honest with myself internally, inspect within. I need to know, I want to know my own karma shea. I want to know my own field of seeds. What's growing in my garden? Is it weeds or is it flowers or is it nice fresh veggies? To use some metaphors. And gradually our own inner wisdom, our own buddhi, Manas Chitta Ankara Bhuti, the four functions we keep talking about, that inner Bhuti will be able to discern. Now sometimes that Bhuti is looking through colored glasses and we come up with the wrong conclusion. I sit there and I say, well, yeah, it's Ma, she's in a bad mood today. And that's that may be my own colored glasses. And that actually it's about me. But if I sit down, if I go sit down to do my meditation and I'm meditating on what a bad mood she's in, I won't see myself. But if I sit down quietly and I close my eyes and my attention comes inward, I may get this insight. We're yogis, so we're kind of okay with this stuff. Insight may come, so whoops, I think that interaction had to do with me, not her. It was because I stubbed my toe this morning and because I was feeling bad because I burned the oatmeal. Oops. And then it's no big deal. I know that, she knows that, and all I got to do is say, Ma, you know that little bump we had this morning, that was about me because I burned the oatmeal. It's not about you. She goes, mm hmm, yeah. And, and so. Glad you figured that out. Yeah, glad you figured that out. And so this is why it's nice to have the good company, the companionship, the friendship, the satsang of other people that are learning this stuff. Because then. Being a jerk or being in a bad mood is simply no big deal. It's you say, well, it's just minds. It's just a silly mind. It did it again. And it's pretty amazing to catch yourself projecting onto other people or transferring some stuff onto other people ex because it all happens within your own karma shaya. It happens within your own karma shaya, yes, in your own antakarna. Yes. Antakarna is inner instrument, another one of those beautiful words. And so the antakarna is the totality of the inner instrument, and the karma shea means the field or the garden in which my seeds and weeds and flowers and veggies are growing. Ray said here, rape victims and abused spouses bring this to the therapeutic relationship constantly. And, and yes, Ray knows from which he is speaking, and yes, it's absolutely true. And I'll just throw out, this is just an opinion because I've seen it happen and I know you have too, Ray, probably more than me in the therapeutic sense. But tremendous, tremendous progress can be made by individual people through this yogic way of exploring within by understanding as a starting point that my intuition my intuition tells me that what these yogis is saying is true. I think these yogis are right. That underneath, if I can say it like this, underneath all of my bullshit and all of my suffering, I think that I really am, pick your words, a being of light. I'm pure consciousness. I think it's true. I am divine. Uh, you know, I am God. I, you know, all of these, I think the yogis are telling me the truth. And if we have that intuition, even a small version of that intuition, then we also can understand that what's going on is that I'm wearing masks out here. Those are the seeds that are in my karma shea. 
the very word personality comes from the Greek word. The root comes from persona, which comes from mask, where the actors on the stage in the Greek theater used to put a mask on their face and come out and play a certain part. And then they'd go backstage and they'd put on a different mask and they'd come out and be a, be a different character on the thing. So you'd put masks on. And this is the root of personality. The word personality is persona. And so we're wearing masks. Well, when you say wearing a mask, that's what we see externally out here. The yogi just goes further and says, it's not the mask that we're wearing out here. What it's really about is the samskaras, the deep impressions, the klishta vrittis that are in my karmashaya. That is what's moving outward, manifesting outward as the mask that you see out here. And so, okay, how to control obsessive thoughts. Tai, I don't, tall, tall or tai? Tall, I think. How to control obsessive thoughts. It's all one process that, that we're talking about. In the yoga perspective, we keep talking about non-attachment. We talk about... We talk about working with the body and with the breath and with the conscious mind and exploring the unconscious mind so that we get glimpses of the pure consciousness that is underneath or behind them or said slightly differently that is way back here behind my mask, behind my senses, behind my thinking mind, behind my ego, behind even my intelligence and that way I just this is just a symbol what I'm doing here with my hands and way back here is my true self my capital S self my Atman and so we have that model of, of the way the yogis explain all this stuff to us and if that makes sense to us true self I've been meditating for quite some time more a year or so but honestly I haven't realized even the self that is masking the true self yeah but you realize something it, you can do it right now, Chandramoli, and this and this matches what Tal, ta, I think, I hope my pronunciation is right, just wrote here. And so you have some sense. If I'm sitting here as I am right now, and I'm not talking about being Atman, I'm just talking about I can be easy. This is very, very easy for any of us to do. I can be aware that back here there is something that is using an impelling force to communicate to you and that intent comes outward through an ego called me and through a karma shea, a whole field of my identities and my entire life background and maybe my tradition is in there giving me an assist and then it comes outward through my brain and then outward through my brain and my central nervous system and my muscles and my mouth and all this here and air coming out so that my voice is working it's relatively easy just to be aware that there's somebody back here that's operating outward through a mind. And I, and, and I know you can do that. You can do that right now. We can practice this easily right now. This is why this whole process of yoga is a process of gradual unfolding. But the core principles are right in front of us literally today in every moment and then gradually as you said here John Ramilly, uh, I haven't realized even that self that is masking the true self well when you said capital S self that is masking the capital T true capital S self those are one and the same I know the intent what you're saying is I haven't realized the little self that that is that is the mask over the true self and 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 that's what I'm trying to respond to to just say, yes, there is. There's a way to do that. You know, your fingers, here's a way to do it. Your fingers were just typing on a keyboard or a, or a pad or something. Your fingers were typing those words. Simply notice the fact that while your fingers were typing, there was a mind who was giving the signal to the fingers through nerves to type the words. This is what's going on. And so there's an instrument of mind that's causing that to happen. And there's somebody behind that who had the intent of communicating. And so that simple act, that simple act right there is the process that we're talking about. 
It's the entire process of sadhana is recognizing that. And you're doing it right now. You just did it again when you typed the word yes. When you typed in Y-E-S, you just did it again. And all you have to do is be aware that I just did that. When you're driving your car down the road, be aware that there's somebody sitting here operating out through the body and through the foot on the gas pedal and the hands on the steering wheel that's operating the eyeballs to look around to not hit somebody. You're doing it right then. There's somebody, this is just a symbol, there's somebody back here that's operating outward through these instruments. And sometimes if you do something that's really stupid, that's a, a, like Tal said, if it happens to be one of those obsessive thoughts or actions that you just keep repeating, you can still be aware that behind, behind or underneath this obsessive thought and action that I just did one more time, behind that there's somebody back here that's not involved in that obsessive thought. And that's exactly the same principle. And if that one seems too hard to do in the moment because the obsessive thoughts that you're talking about are so strong, if they're really, really very strong, then, then make it simpler. Make it simple, as simple as being aware that there's somebody making a decision to move the legs and the feet to walk down the street. Somebody is back here using the instruments of mind and body and nervous system and muscles to move the feet down the road as you walk. There's somebody doing that. Do, do it simple like that. If you're in the kitchen and, and you're making a cup of tea and you take the, the tea kettle thing and you put water in it, somebody is holding your hand to hold the teapot, to put it under the water, to put the water in the thing. Somebody is back here making a decision to do that and basically sending out an instruction to the arm to pick up the tea kettle and to go pick up the tea bag or the tea thing or however you make your tea and to put it in the hot water. Somebody's back here doing it. And that's... Huh? I forgot about that. And, and Matri forgot about her tea. She had some tea sitting there on the table. Now she's got it. I have... Like a puppeteer. Like yeah. A, like a puppeteer. Yes, Nicholas. We're all a big Muppet show. Ma says, we're all a big Muppet show. That's kind of cute. But yes, but remember, my true self is the puppeteer. I'm the one way back here and pulling the strings on the little puppet thing there like that. And what has happened is that we have forgotten. We have come to think that who I am is the puppet. And we have forgotten that i that's not true. That who I am is the one back here running the strings. There's a very old metaphor uh, about the chariot. When I wrote about this on my website, I entitled the article, Who's Driving Your Chariot? Because that's the way that story struck me. That I, it's an old symbol. We don't drive chariots, money, but, but pretend that you're a couple thousand years ago and you have a chariot. And the physical body is the body of the chariot. And out in front of the chariot, there are ten horses. And the ten horses are the ten indrias. These are the janendrias, the cognitive senses come in, and the karmendrias doing the actions, walking down the street or speaking. So speaking is karma. Action is karmendria. Hearing, so that I can hear your words, you're listening to me right now, that's janendrias. Jana is knowing. Those are cognitions. So the ten horses are the indrias. And the reins, the reins are the manas. And so who's the guy driving the chariot, holding the reins? There's the ego back there and all of his identities. And he is, is moving the reins to steer the horses. Now, if he's not doing his job well, what do the horses do? The horses just drive all over the place and go off the trail and go bump, bump, bump and, and cause problems. This is what our senses do. And so control the reins. Well, what do you do to control the reins? The driver of the chariot has to be trained. And who am I really? I'm the passenger who's in the chariot. The Atman, the capital S self, is the passenger in the chariot. It's just a metaphor. And, and we use metaphors and language to get to this thing. It's essentially saying the same thing 
as me trying to say, I am back here using the instruments of mind and ego and intelligence and, and body to operate out here. But I'm this way back here, and we can all do this. Let's see, I want to look here, see if I... When I learn something, somebody is aware that I have learned. Good point, Ray. Look at that. Listen carefully what Ray said. When I learn something, somebody is aware that I have learned. So the I who has learned is not the true I. The true I, the capital S self, the Atman, is way back here, looking out at the world through karma shea, through the field of karma shea, of habit patterns, which is like my glasses. So I'm looking out, I am the true self looking out through glasses, and I naturally see the world in a certain way. Good. I don't think, I don't think I missed anything in there, no, did no, I? No. Okay. So, it's been good. It's, uh, Okay, so probably a good time to stop, huh? Or will Ed, I can just keep going and going and going. I like hanging out like this. This is what I enjoy doing with people, as long as it turns into real insight. And and so and I appreciate the comments that you were typing in there. It brings life to what yeah, we're talking nice. about. And thank you, Ma. It's always helpful to have her sitting there because... And you call that that you're uh, uh, in the crime scene? You're in the crime no, scene? No, no, when the police, you know, has a, the deputy. The I'm deputy. The deputy. She's the, she likes you're to the be the sheriff. deputy. I'm, the I'm the sheriff. You're the sheriff. Got I'm my the six shooters here. I'm the deputy. Called Booty. Well, I hope that they shoot a lot of Shakti. They, they shoot Shakti. They shoot Insight. <laughs> They don't shoot bullet bullets. So, hi, Viviana. Viviana was here all along, and I don't know. There's more people here. If you haven't typed in the box, uh, it's hard. I don't know exactly who's here. Eric Clapton's son. I don't know about Eric Clapton. I guess you meant song. I shot the sheriff. Dudu, is that who that, that is? Stored in my karma share. Yeah, okay, thank you for well, playing. I'm not going to shoot the sheriff, though. No, please don't shoot the sheriff. No. So, I, uh, after this thing is up, after I push the finish button and this shows up in the Ashram Satsang group, if you want to make any more comments on this or post anything, please go ahead and do it. And if you have anything I can respond to, I, I will definitely respond. And so, Rakesh Kumar Kalusu, I don't think we've met, have we? No. But nice to see you. So come anytime. And so you may have noticed, uh, for some of you have noticed, that I this morning put out an announcement uh, that in honoring of Guru Purnima, which is Tuesday, we're putting out our Ashtanga Yoga Udemy course online free. 10,000 free coupons. And I, I did that because I think that I'm certain that number is so huge that, uh, that it won't run out. But if you see that and you want to share it, share it with anybody you want. There, there's, no, there's no secret hidden agenda there. We don't, we don't get a mail. We don't, we, there's just no agenda to it. It's just it's in honor of remembering Guru Purnima and gratitude for that stream of consciousness that guides us all. As Swamiji reminds us, Swami Rama, in the waking, dreaming, and deep sleep states, and then operates through people, but that is not a person. And if you want to hang out for our little Guru Purnima celebration on Tuesday night, on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock Central Time, U.S. Ashram Time, we will come online a little and chat a little bit, and I will do some selective readings from Swami Rama on Guru because some of it I just quite enjoy. So if you're free and you want to, join us for that on Tuesday night. And, and so if you have not seen that Ashtanga Yoga course that we've made, it's pretty good. I think the outcome was pretty good. And if you know anybody, if you want to share it to personally do that, huh? People have shared it already. Already? Good. A few people had. I just put it on there, I don't know, an hour and a half, two hours ago. And so it's a really straight offer that, I'm, that is out there for people. And there's no hidden agenda. 
as far as I know, other than finding and getting beyond your karma shaya. Finding and transcending your karma shaya. Sounds like a new book title, doesn't it? I'm not going to write one. You can write one. No. Antidotes help us by comparing something that is unknown to something that is known to help us understand the unknown. That's Ray said that. Ray is one of those really, really, I like Ray. Ray is one of those really, as a person, very, very extremely off the charts intelligence. I mean, he has a really high IQ and all that kind of stuff. And at the same time, he has a heart of gold, a very practical, down-to-earth fellow. I enjoy knowing Ray. So good comments. Thank you, Ray. Thank you all for playing. I guess I should push the button here. I never I never like ending. I like it's like keep going. But we'll we'll do something here at Hangout and and at four o'clock today if you want to play, we're gonna be online again in the go to meeting thing, which is announced in that in the Ashram Facebook group on Bhagavad Gita. And Leela the preacher will be here will not be here. She'll be online with us to do the reading and we'll have open conversation and like that. And so and then she's coming here to be with us tomorrow. I look forward to that. So, see you dewey again. Dewey. dewey Dewey. Dewey Dewey. Buenos tacos, which is tacos. bastardized Spanish, Chungaji. which means good day. Changaji. Changaji. We just learned that Changaji is is goodbye in, uh, in not Gujarati in uh, Punjabi. In Punjabi. In Punjabi. Dewey, Dewey, me too. Yes, okay. Leela was here. I didn't know you were here, Leela. I just now found out you were here. Nicholas, buenos tacos. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, well, we do the best we can, Nicholas, you know. We're gringos, as they call us in Mexico. We're, we're northerners. We're, when we're so egotistical that we call ourselves Americans. Isn't, isn't that something? We call ourselves Americans. I don't know what we call you people in, in Argentina. You're obviously not Americans. We're, we're kind of an egotistical country. We claim the whole name for ourselves, and that's an act of ego that's stored in the collective karma shea. It's fun, isn't it? That we, that's why I like the phrase, oh, silly mind. We all have silly minds that play these silly games. So once again, thank you for playing see you another time and have a wonderful day. I'm going to go shave, I think. Or grow a beard. I don't know which. Om Tat Sat. Om, that is where it's happening. Om, that's it. Om, that alone is reality. Tat means that. Sat means the absolute consciousness. So Om Tat Sat. Om, that's where all the action is, is the way I sort of, you know, and so good night turns into buenos nachos and good day turns into buenos tacos. Okay, bye bye. Thank you again for playing. <laughs> Om Tat Sat. We're Americans too, South Americans. Although Argentina would be what you, Argentinian, Argentinos would be what you'd say. Okay, we'll let you be honorary Americans because we know that the real Americans are up here. You can uh, stop. I'm just, just playing. To get yeah, I'm digging myself deeper in the hole, but I, I hope it's clear. I'm just teasing. And I get to laugh over this culture because this is where I, I came from. I came from this crazy country and these crazy people. But I'm not one of them. I'm Atman. <laughs> dewey, dewey, y'all. Dewey, dewey. Which is bye. Dutch. They taught me it's Dutch. Dewey, dewey is Dutch for bye-bye, y'all. Dewey, dewey. Om tat sat. Bye-bye.